hoping you guys are hopefully not watching the BTS stream because they have left the draft overlay up. Shocking stuff. K-pop toasters, get on that. It's not us, right? That's not us. No, I'm I, we, we're, I'm controlling my stream here. There we go. Whew. Production staff these days can't find good help. Don't make them like they used to, dude. No. All right, mid TNC smoke again. I I remember they did the same thing in game one, right? And they couldn't find anybody. Um, they did not find anybody, but they managed to get into the enemy jungle. Ooh. And now the smoke's going to broke Yamate. Stands by yeah. his tower. He's like, okay, we All know right. what's going on. Good smoke. They're going to keep going, though. They've got a... Got a boar. Nope, denied. Ling gets bonked. Alright, some dropping some deep wards versus the jungle Beastmaster. Ooh. It's always tough, but Beastmaster is very... He does not want to like go over to this secret shop camp because he needs to, like he wants to keep all his camps nice and close together and loses the two best and most important camps. Yeah, this is actually the, the best camp because basically you could just stand here, cut this tree, and then you have a little bit of uh, choke point jungling where you don't take that, that much damage. Yeah, it's and like the you... easiest choke point jungle spot really there is. Right. So, even though that smoke didn't really convert into anything, I don't think TNC counted it to convert. They just want to drop some wards. All right. Let's see if more Beastmaster's going to head. He's going offensive jungle. What are you talking about? All right. If it works out, it works out. It's somewhat dangerous, though. <laughs> yeah. They, they, I mean, the raiding side have to find him and figure out that that's even happening before they can yeah. do anything about it, which doesn't look like it's going to happen right away by any means. So, mid lane. We're still Sentry as well as Observer Ward planted down here to help out Yamate. And oh, they found him. Witch Doctor walks into the Beastmaster, has a cast which he is going to hold on to for now, wants to right click down the boar, but that'll get denied. Yeah, nobody kills nobody, but that's a problem for the Beastmaster yeah. in the sense that he needs, like, you pick the Beastmaster jungle, it's a very greedy pick. You need to get away uh, by having a ton of EXP. And kills. Yeah, he gets to this camp, he could stack this, but you don't really want to stack this right now. No, I probably can't handle a stack. One. Yeah. If, if you stack it, you're like, I'm stacking this and going to come back later on, but realistically, he's going to farm this one. So when he finishes farming this, he's got nowhere to go, except this medium camp, which is a long, long way away. Sentry Ward dropped? No, oh, okay. Ah, Sentry Ward from, I guess, the Batrider to help him out. Although he's not picking it up right now. Got to get those sentries, bro. Do you ward your camps? Finding that Observer would be a nice little gold bounty for him as well, although... Right now, he really needs experience more than gold. So if he finds that observer, he could like time it and tangle it as well to get even more regen. But would be nice. All right, Tyrang just getting outplayed like strategically for this yeah. Beastmaster. And then uh, again, we touched on it a little bit earlier. This Rubik. I mean, Rubik's one of my favorite hero, and I just can't play him in any of my games because how weak of a laning presence that he has. Because this Slara is just like, okay, I'm going to zone you away from EXP range. I mean, I'll, my creeps take down the wild ring, and then I get the EXP for this. Then AU and the Abaddon's made his way north towards this top lane. Gives some added pressure. Yo, Four lanes out of TNT. The 2006, like, Dota build where you, like, stack the ironwood branches. <laughs> When's the last time we've seen that? <laughs> Four of them, like... <laughs> when do you actually see that anymore? How many items are you going to make with branches? Going wand and I guess magic wand mech? Magic wand used to take three ironwood branches, right? Yeah, so. that, that's actually... Yeah, that's a throwback. Yeah. Alright, uh, Slark actually is having a relatively tough time on the mid lane. He rushed bottle on Abaddon, that's not what I would have expected. Oh, mid lane. Kill, well. Yamate, ooh, bottle's back up as well, but that base damage from Witch Doctor and a haste rune. Couldn't stay through. Nicely played, then. That gank was very necessary. If you look at the CS disparity, uh, you know, Yamate was really giving it to the Slark. Yeah, and Slark did not have a bottle. Is this, this Abaddon buy him a bottle? No, he's actually bringing it top. So for a second, I'm like, is he going to just send that mid and give it to Slark? But yeah, Slark needs to get up some HP back up or get, get, get that bottle out as soon as possible. So speaking of uh, bottle in the offlane, how often have you ever bought a bottle in the side shop? With a one charge. I've done it quite a bit, but that's because I really, I like, I, I just like doing it because you, and then you just go and grab a rune, like right. like an Ember Spirit or something. But uh, I see it very little. Yeah. 
if you do it, you have to be like timing it such that you get a rune like right after. Yeah, it, so. I buy it around like, you know, 3:30, and I'm just like get ready to make my way down there. Or give it to your support and be like, go get me that rune. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm that I'm that kind of player. It's Damn like, man. Support come back. Then they don't make me happy. Like maybe I'll give him a bottle charge for it. You know. No, I'm the support to play that if my carry tells me I, I I eat the bounty and they take like one or two charges and be like, alright, here's your bottle back. I mean that's the thing, like as a support you're getting a bounty rune or something out of it. Like it's not yeah. it's not too bad to trade. I guess you have to bring the bottle back, so if you get like a haste rune you can't really you can't go gang mid. Or car carry play gets upset at that point. <laughs> like, if, my, if my support takes my bottle and goes mid with a haste rune, I'm like, dude, what's what's going on? <laughs> that's my bottle. But I, I'm surprised. I I feel like I never see players pick up the bottle in the side shop. It's just that scenario that we described. It's really hard to guarantee that you get a rune yes. in a pro game, especially. Yeah, in pub games, it's normally much like easier. much higher chance you get runes. Yeah. Whereas there's much greater emphasis on rune control. By the way, uh, NJ, who does have a bottle for himself, which is already a com uncommon for offline pet, has been uh, doing a very good job, kind of stealing jungle creeps away from uh. From the Radiant. 18 CS, level 5.5, and, and yeah. we're seeing this kind of slow paced early game, but yeah. I think a much better start compared to what we saw. Like, I mean, CS wise, it's, it's miles better for Orange Tearing. I mean, NJ's losing the lane again, but you know what's new. Is he? Yeah. Uh, I guess lose is a strong word. He's he... a 1v2. He's yeah. against Jero. He's This is All right. not meant to do. Sorry, I just wanted to hate for a bit, but you're right, you're right. It's... This is like expected out. Uh, this is almost better than what you'd sometimes see for a witch doctor plus Jarakop the lane. Yeah. And somehow our Sven is, you know, still farming up top, so. There's that. The Radiant side have split the farm between Sam H and AU. That's the thing. Like, it looks like Sam H maybe doesn't have a whole lot of farm, but AU's got 11 CS. So you can, like, the combined CS of these two top laners, you're looking at 30 plus. Sure. Let's see Sam right now. We'll have to see what the first move's gonna be. Ice is still only just now looking for his level five. He won't get that six and a half level six most likely. Yeah, his jungle being tampered with is tough. I do want to point out that Yamate, as he might get uh, into a fight here, hasn't skill strackle shot at all. Just uh, how the mid lane works is probably not gonna get a kill here against the Slark, but looks to mostly just to pressure and not die. When Slark's level six, so he's gonna be at a regen himself in this lane that little bit easier. So the other day when I saw, I, I remember a super or maybe another mid Chinese player, when, when he found an arcane rune on the uh, on the Windranger, all he did was shot power shots in any <laughs> mid, just non-stop. I'm, I'm surprised to see Yamato not do the same, because it's so man efficient uh, once you get the arcane going. I guess against Slack, you, you know he's going to HP regen, regen for yeah. free, but That's fair. save it for a gank or a fight perhaps. Save it for your focus fire, if you want to plink a tar. Yeah, can. So, yeah, Mate about to hit level seven. Curious to see what, what and when the first move will be. Like you've got Gyro level six, so in theory he's ready to rotate once he picks up a TP scroll. Beastmaster's level six on the Dire side is probably there. He's already picked up a smoke. Just yeah, a little bit later. I feel like the likes of Gyro or Slark they will rotate if there's a big tower dive happening on the top lane, but. The likelihood of that happening is quite low, so I think on both cases everybody's just gonna farm for a bit. And that brings me to the question: Is uh, are we gonna see the the standard blink bat or some of that next level drums bat? Hmm. I've only seen the drums on the safe lane, free farming bat. So that wings gaming man. Yeah, they're they're meta changes. I mean that that pick that caught on. I've saw saw a lot of players do it since then. Other Dude. Chinese teams, like Ramsey's on Team Empire was doing it, so... I asked Winter on camera why, and he just, like, flamed me. <laughs> it's bullying. Couldn't give me an answer. I, I don't think he had a good answer, so he's like, alright, let's flame Lubin instead. That's a good cop-out. That's why he's gonna get sued. Yeah, <laughs> give it time, man. It's, it's gonna happen. Alright, Jack Cop is jungling away, but here comes the gang squad. Do they have Roar? Yeah, they, they do. do. They just, just got it. Raven... Um, okay. Roared up. Can't really fight his way out of this one. He's gonna turn, drop the cooldown in the rocket barrage. Catches well, both teams here is ice. Ice, where are you going, dude? Yeah, he's got no TP. He's oh, block the pounce. Just uh, need the pounce. Might die here though. Just needs to get away. The firefly eluded well enough. So no lasso, no flame break. Just 
essentially focusing on his economy. Yeah. Which is fine. But yeah, he'll hit level 8 around... Oh, well, maybe even a level 8. Top lane, Psyonix in a lot of trouble here. Yamazi comes in with Focus Fire and Shackle Shot, but needs to just run now. Out of mana completely, so can't turn around with a, another Power Shot. He thinks about it, gets cast, it's gonna get stunned, therefore comes through Yamate. Uncharacteristic mistakes here. Ooh. Well, DNC. Say thanks for the freebies up top, and should be able to get some pressure on this T1 tower as a result of this. Yeah, I mean, think about what transpired in the last minute, right? The the radiant mid went into the jungle, got a kill. The dire mid went to the top lane and fed a kill. Like we're gonna see a, a lot of uh, kind of go go grab changes, especially if TNC could uh, get a little bit more by taking the tier one top tower or just damaging it quite a bit. Yeah, for now it looks like it's just gonna be a bit of damage. As Sven is already TP back up here. Sven, helping the dominators up hasn't. Dom it just yeah dominate something now. Missing on 2.8k Oh, now, he's doing it wrong, man. He dominated the range one. That's all your EXP, bro. <laughs> well, you, you want you don't want a melee one. You, you, I guess you get a range neutral. Yeah. Get like one of the... Yeah, this is Satyr camp nearby, or a Dark Troll. Harpy Stormcaller. I mean, they have 1400 HP. Even if you dominate a melee one, they... It's you know, just harder to... Get the, get a time, good yeah. time pull. Yeah. It's much easier time with a range group. Uh oh, yeah, you're missing on that efficiency. T he's here, straight up TP. Good call. Nice fight. So mid slack, uh, he's farming pretty well. No problems there. Getting out CS, but as far as net worth go, he's in pretty good position against this Wind Ranger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cast comes back. There could be a pounce here with a death ward, but nope. He wind runs to the north. Nice and play. If he gets caught in the pounce, there, it could just be a straight up kill. Oh, now Tihi initiate on, but he got the dark pack off. He's gonna turn around with the shadow dance. Witch Doctor coming back now, and Ice. Oh, oh. still for? Not sure. Mm. Dodo. Uh, Ice is dead. Uh, uh, Ice is dead. I'm not sure if that was. Okay, so that last engagement is the reason why TNC picks Lark. Like, once yeah. he's in, in his ultimate, there's nothing that could stop him. And also, I mean, he gets rid of a raw, so. Yeah. Against. Because of this light cast time on, like, raw. Shackle has to fly through the air, you can often dark pack off these disables. Sure. Oh, I don't Casual okay. arrest. Man, T is such a player. He's not afraid of anything. Kind Just goes in. <laughs> He's aggressive. He is. That's the one thing I really appreciate about watching C. Like their mid players are generally just balls to the wall. Nope. And that's how you win your pub games, dude. Ooh. By the way, Taring, blink dagger up on NJ, so. Okay. See if you can find kills. This is where having like a Rubik support. This is not a support that gives you a ton of backup damage to your bat router. Dude, he's gonna steal a uh, call down. Dude, he damage. Rocket prize even. Not bad yeah. too. For now, Gyrocopter is farming cautiously in his own jungle. Not willing to risk showing his face in the bottom lane. Are there even any good spells to steal this game? Cask. Death Ward is a, the easy steal, but I mean, it, it, no, it's hard steal in the game. Voodoo what? Restoration. You you, 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 ah. you toggle Voodoo and it. I guess good players, it. yeah. You toggle it while you're Death Warding. There you go. So it's one of those things which you should theoretically never steal. You know, I always face palm when my my ally Phoenix gives away their egg. I'm like, yeah, just dude, just press a button, any button. Yeah. If he's in range. To, to steal it, it means he got stunned by it, which means he should be able to cast any exactly. of three spells. Yeah. But it happens. Yeah, exactly, it happens. That's the thing, it'll happen on a death one every now and then. They catch out the blink oh. bat rider, he does not get that blink off, and it's the blinking slaughter coming in. Crushes one down, Ice. Look at the TP his way out of here. No crush in time for slaughter, his blink's still on cooldown. T and C. This game is looking like pretty far out of reach. It's kind of taking a similar course to game one with Taring just not finding the early game kills as well. Oh, god damn for it. Yeah, uh, okay, I was saying how it's a, a steal you should not get. <laughs> well, about that. <laughs> so it. Lumi, you don't get, you don't steal death one against good players. <laughs> what are you saying? I mean, indirect blame on Cuckoo. <laughs> no. Cuckoo is <laughs> questionable. It, I mean, anytime Deathward gets stolen, it, it is a questionable play, yeah. but it happens. That's the thing. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad we also say that. It Those happens. things happen. Yeah. And... Stelda. 
They come in D-Ward the, the pool camp, so... Alright, range creep. So, the reason that I'm very concerned for Karen right now is... Uh, Bat Rider is the hero that's supposed to lead them back in the game. And not only does he he's not finding gangs, he's just dying. Alright, let's see if we get one here. Oh. Mm. Got Roar, yeah. got Crush. Oh, oh, no! Alright, got Not so easy. Okay. They need that power shield. Without that power shield, I'm not even sure they had that. Oh, Cast is flying here, and here comes Dee. A nice shackle shot here by Wind Ranger. Can we get the kill? Cuckoo's gonna get healed up. He's fine. Here comes the call down. And now Wind Ranger being uh, kind of tangled up here with Tihi. T's gonna get one kill. The chase is gonna go on. Rubik's are also dead. Batrider barely blinks away. I mean, that's not even a clear victory here for uh, Orange. That's no, a straight up victory for TNT in the end after yeah. getting the two kills. Sada goes down short, but that's that's your offlane Sada anyway. He's already got blink, dude. He's, He's mastered. Mid lane, got caught out. Tihi. Blinks on top of him, gets the kill, and Tihi just starting to take control of this game, mid slark. Yeah, it's getting almost to the point where if you let the slark keep on snowballing, it's just so hard. Like, your supports are going to just get become free food, uh, essentially. I think my favorite thing about TNT as a team is just, like, how much influence there is between them and MVP Phoenix. Because this mid slark was actually something MVP Phoenix used to do. Okay. Kyo used to play the slark mid all the time, and vice versa, TNT were the ones who kind of innovated with the mid Phantom Lance. It's something that MVP then took to, like, the international level, where they beat Invokers and stuff mid using this Phantom Lance. So there's a lot of, kind of, innovation coming out from the Southeast Asian region because of, like, TNT and MVP. And you do say that TNC do actually take games uh, from MVP from time to time, correct? Yeah, yeah, th they have quite consistently. Like, it's maybe being kind of, on, as far as online games go, they probably go about 50-50 or okay. somewhat close to that. Well, TNC, TNC is like the clear num number three team in Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, they, it's, they haven't managed to qualify for any big lands. Normally, well, it's like there's only one spot and then Fnatic or MVP takes it and... That's they, that. uh, they are looking good, at least in this set, Yeah. to kind of... I mean, this is your chance. Like, Fnatic and MVP both got directly invited. There's one SEA spot. If you're TNC, like, you got to show and prove that, yeah, we're the third best team in Southeast Asia. But they still got a long ways to go. Taring won't want to go out without a fight here in game number two, but they're going to start doing just that fairly soon. Fight. Oops. Scan coming out here for, uh, I believe, the dire side. Not catching anybody. You can see that little slaughter gets two man crushed. Actually, where, where did the ultimate go? It's gonna be on the Witch Doctor. Not sure if he's gonna get the kill. The Beastmaster will come through. Tihi again, just immune once he's ulti, and they're gonna turn things around here. No, they're gonna back it up for now. Again, Death War doing so much work. In fact, he goes in under the fire. Now jumps back out, thinks better of it. It's a one for zero fight so far. Uh, actually, never mind. Looks like the small zoo army gets one more kill. In fact, it's not done yet. Zionix in a lot of trouble. He's gonna go down. So, whoa, tries to clean down a Jowcopter. Unfortunately, unable to do so. 3 nothing and a tier 1 tower. So, and the Abaddon pick is starting to make more and more sense. You have this Slark who just wants to yeah. play balls to the wall. He's blinking in, like, into a Firefly 3 heroes, but he's still got the pounce to escape. So he blinks in, does as much damage, can pounce out, has a Photic Shield on him to kind of give him a bit, bit of extra sustain and even just AoE damage output. Yeah, the, the Abaddon 4th pick didn't make much sense till, you know, the finale. Yeah, and the Abaddon also kind of took over the lane, actually has 34 CS, sure. 305, has more farm than the Slaughter, in fact. I think he's going to go Vlad's at this point, and that just like yep. al allows your, your push to be much stronger. Goes mech. With the okay. Arcane boots, that, that, that Same thing, of... like, essentially, uh, just a good aura item that helps your teamfight better. Yep. And they can just go tower to tower now, they take a tier 1, tier 2 mid, they can swing their way top lane where Tihi already pressuring things up, a Orchid build out, nope, uh, yeah. Wait, Slack is going for Orchid, or do you go Echo Saber on this hero? So, uh, both seven? Uh, he's going Echo Saber. Go Echo on this hero. A whole bunch of Slark players have been tampering with Echo. Yep. Um, your, your damage output looks terribly weak. Like, even if you're 40 minutes in, because one of the follow-up to the Echo Saber is Basher. And Basher doesn't give you a ton of plus damage. It gives you damage if you could proc that Bash, which Echo Saber helps you to do so as well. So that's something I will look forward to, uh, the Bastion follow-up. The scan around Roshan, they see it ping out heroes, but now they're going to find another target, a better one perhaps, an NJ. NJ solo in the jungle. Yeah. Like, Batrider is not a solo hunter, so I'm not sure why he was there. I don't know if TNC, were, TNC actually thought 
towering were going for Roche there. They're scanned right by the Roche pit, scouted out heroes, and they find the Batrider. They say, well, let's just take Roche ourselves. We've got amp damage. Yeah. This game and is looking pretty ugly. Yeah, honestly, without the Batrider, you can't really fight around the Roshan pit. Slux, a very underrated uh, hero to fight around the Roche pit as well. He gives you uh, information whether there's vision or not. Um, he's so mobile thanks to the fact that he has a slink. So. Yeah, now AJ's is gonna end up on T I imagine. Yep. Yep. So what do you do? Push one towers. No, yeah, if, you're, if you're Tarang, what do you uh, do? Sven, what's he? Is he gonna buy an Echo Saber with his sages? He's got 2.2k. He could pick up a blink dagger. Perhaps you just go for these mass blink initiations and just try to blow heroes up. Batrider blinks in, lassos one, Sven follows it up and tries to burst. I suppose, like, it's basically predicated on the fact that Tihi makes a mistake. Because if he times his start pack properly, he will never die. Yeah. And well, with an Aegis, he's like not even the target you want to go for, which is where these blinks perhaps become more valuable for Taring because they can blink and bypass the slug. Right. Go for the back, Gyro, the back I guess. line. Gyro, like, he has a BKB finishing soon, but um, this lineup could deal with BKB with uh, Flaming Lasso and, and Beastmaster Roar, so... Yeah, I guess you, you kill the Gyro, or you kill the Witch Doctor, or Slaughter. The problem is, like, whoever you go on, if you don't go on the Slaughter, Slaughter crushes your whole team. You know, I feel like they're just so far behind that it's hard to get any easy kills. Oh, there are, there are no easy free kills at this stage of the game. They've only had two the entire Game two, one of those coming around the 14 minute mark, the other, I believe, yeah, much earlier on, Radiant pre 10 minutes. So it's been a very attack. uneventful game for the Taring side. Well, things might get a little bit more eventful against Execration. If they lose this one, that's who they'll face after this uh, best of three series. This feels like a different Radiant team to what we saw out of Taring the last couple of days. Much less aggression, none of that. I don't know. They've just lost a bit of their flair, almost. Yeah. Again, when when Taran wings, generally is through their individual skills, and like that that comes down to winning the lane stage, right? They just lost all their lane stages. We have to try climb a mountain here in game number two. They couldn't do it in game number one, and TNC seem intent on taking this last out of tower here in the top lane. Yeah, I think this this one, even though they're so far behind, is still better than game one. Game one, they just waited for the Doom to come. It feels like this game, we're talking about methods where they could start a fight with multiple Blink Daggers. They could at least take fights in their own turn. Maybe do a, a big smoke play, wrap around, go in and surgically remove a couple of targets. Mm -hmm. Again, very difficult. You have to get by the Slardar. You have to get through a Podic Shield. And there's a Slark that you're probably never going to kill. So, I mean, let's see how they're going to accomplish this uh, difficult task. Blast. The high ground catches out onto Ice, and Ice needs to roll target, gets out on the Slaughter, but there's another shield that instantly dispels at Psyonix. No BKB. That's two dead and two without buyback. Alright, that's the game. That, yeah, that, I concur. No, no, that, if that wasn't the game already, perhaps now. They find another kill, another hero without buyback. Should be a straightforward top lane of Rax here for TNC. We got the tier 3 tower to start things off. It won't be a GG call just yet coming out from Orange Towering, but well, one by one, they all fall down. And there's that GG. 20 no. to 2. Abaddon really, really covers uh, the Slark team well. Slark doesn't high ground well. Abaddon does, right? Like, Curse of Avernus 